All right, so welcome back to uh, YouTube, guys. We wanted to do something a little different. Hopefully, you guys can hear me okay. The mic's okay. But uh, so I wanted to do a Q&A because there's a lot of questions that arise, uh, whether it's on YouTube or social media. Um, I want to thank you guys, too. And listen, this doesn't stop here. If you guys want to put your questions on here, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, but I'm going to have uh, J-Mac just... Uh, narrate a couple of the questions. I'll do my best to answer it, and uh, we're going to kind of go with it from there. All right, so uh, first things first. What's your favorite memory with Ronnie Coleman? My favorite memory with Ronnie Coleman. Man, there's a lot of good ones. I mean, obviously competing, you know, in Russia. We went to Romania together. But I would probably say the guest posings that we did, and probably Pittsburgh every year, um, because... Pittsburgh was kind of our final uh, destination. I, I can't say that. I guess the Bev Francis event, Atlantic States was, or, you know, the, the West Coast Classic we did a couple years in California because those were well into June. But May was the starting point of when I would kind of, I would go home from the Pittsburgh Pro Show and I would start my prep for Olympia. So we'd get to get a look at each other. We'd get to spend some time. And it was our last relaxation point of our year because we would start training for Olympias right after that. You know, June would be full tilt prep and we were still in that relaxed state. So we'd eat together, we'd train together. And I kind of get an idea of, you know, where his head was at and where my head was at. And remember, we were top two for years. So for us to kind of sit there and be able to relax and have some laughs and good times, eat some pizza together, you know, it was a rare occasion. So uh, that would probably be my best memory, those off-season times with Ronnie. And, of course, the guest posings were fun, too. Right, yeah. Did you feel depleted before going on stage, or did the adrenaline take over? You know what? I, I was always really depleted. Now, one thing about my prep is I was always a, a person that had to dehydrate a lot. So when I say dehydrate, I was drinking over two gallons of water daily, okay, so of fluid. So for me... I always had to taper that down. And this is a suggested thing for any of you guys getting ready for shows. You know, you kind of cut the water slowly. You don't just go cold turkey and you just cut the water out from two, two gallons to nothing. So I would taper by half a gallon each day the last week until I got down to basically half a gallon the day before the show. And then I wouldn't drink for, you know, I'd only have a little sips for like 12 hours. Very, very taxing time for me. Dehydration, crazy. Uh, but that's when my body performed the best. So... Uh, it was a struggle, and of course, when you're dehydrated, it's really hard to eat, and the amount of calories I had to eat to maintain my size was extreme, right? So I had to be able to, you know, force feed myself at the same time when the fluids are low. So adrenaline had to carry me through, but you could tell on some of my events, I was kind of dragging a little bit, to be honest. Okay. Which year was your favorite physique? My favorite physique year would best definitely be 2001, 2009. There's a lot of controversy on what, what was my best on stage. Of course, people look at the quad stomp, and that's what they remember because that was like almost towards the end of my career, right? But 2001, before, you know, really uh, I was known and whatever else, I came to stage, I, I almost won a Mr. Olympia title against Ronnie there, you know, leading prejudging by six. Uh, and then falling, you know, by three at the night show. But man, that was a great physique. I was around the same weight as 2009, maybe a little heavier, but the condition was there. Um, I think that prep was fun. I think 09 prep was fun, even though people were counting me out. Uh, but I, I know coming to the stage, I always had a blast when I would get out there and the crowd would respond. And I think it just was really cool in 09 because, you know, I had spent time, I had been a resident in Las Vegas, where in 01 I was not. Uh, I was just here. It was my first Olympia competing uh, since, you know, 99 was my first. But it was the first year I was able to stand in the top six. So for me, uh, you know, I, I would probably say 2009 if you would really uh, put anything forward. And just so many great things were going on in my life then. And uh, I just think that quad stomp is legendary. And, you know, I felt good after that. Did you do anything specific to maintain muscle symmetry? Did I do anything to maintain muscle symmetry? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of isolateral training. I always had an imbalance between my arms and my legs, so I did a lot of neuromuscular work. I did um, a lot of dry needling. Uh, I did Graston work, um, active release. I'd fly back and forth to California 
to see my therapist, uh, you know, whether it be Steve Murphy or Derek uh, Farnsworth or uh, my buddy Jeff in San Diego. I mean, I worked with the best. And here, you know, I had all my masseuses, uh, whether it was Glenn Hall or Jason here, who was always working on me. Uh, I had uh, many, many people in my corner. Uh, so I always worked to keep my fascia loose. Uh, and of course, the training aspect, I did pay attention to those body parts that were lacking a little bit and more with isolateral training and a lot of stimulation. In your opinion, has social media made a positive or negative impact on the fitness industry? Uh, social media, uh, is it positive or negative? I think it's great. I think uh, it gives us an opportunity to have a way bigger audience. Uh, of course, if you have a short fuse or if you have, you know, uh, if you don't have thick skin, sometimes, you know, the comments on social media, there's always going to be those people because it allows those, the platform to be able to speak on anything, uh, gives anyone that ability. But I think it's been great for the fans to be able to stay in touch, keep up minute to minute what you do, where before with the magazines, it was month, there were months lapse of what was going on. Uh, so now we can stay much more in touch, uh, communicate, uh, meet new friends, uh, obviously, uh, you know, worldwide audience, the expansion of that. Um, and luckily, you know, I've, I've taken full advantage of it. I'm on all platforms and I continue to put out content like this. Uh, so, you know, I'd love to hear other people's opinion on it. But for me, it's been a very positive thing. What is your current training split? Current training split is training seven days a week. I hate to say this, but uh, I used to train on a three on, one off, two on, one off schedule. And listen, I did four days in a row. Uh, I've done five days in a row, but I train seven days a week now. The only days I miss is the days that I'm forced to miss, whether I'm traveling or, you know, there's something that holds me back from going, which is a very rare occasion because the gym is absolutely necessary. In fact, I'm in the gym usually twice a day. So I do cardio in the morning and then I do weights in the afternoon. So there's not a lot of time that is, you know, where I'm just saying, hey, I'm going to take the day off unless my body's just really tired from a trip. I just don't feel I train that extensively compared to what I did when I was training full capacity. Listen, I, I could only train two or three days in a row before I got beat down. Uh, but I never suggest seven days in a row. You know, I'm still one in my program is to put uh, having days off. What's the longest you've gone without training? Longest I've gone without training, uh, probably when I tore my bicep uh, in 2011 and I had surgery in 2012. I was not in the gym for a couple of weeks. I went in and started doing legs after that. But ever since the day I started on August 3rd, 1991, I can tell you I've been in the gym for pretty much that whole time, not taking any time down. I wasn't one to go after a show and take two or three or four a month off. I mean, some people do. They want to rest their body. For me, man, training is everything to me. Uh, it's kind of my my therapy and uh, I re rarely ever miss and take time off. Right. And lastly, what are your plans for the future and this upcoming year? Plans for the future this coming year? Uh, listen, travel schedule's crazy. Um, I have a lot going on with the business side, you know, the, whether it's the clothing brand or the supplements, show promotions, uh, business outside of bodybuilding. I think it's just you know, giving back and educating, that's, if you asked me what my real job on a day-to-day -day basis is, is, is creating um, the ability for others to see the pathway to get to, you know, wherever you're trying to get to, whether it's, you know, fitness or outside of fitness, whether it's, you know, your job and your careers, your lifestyle, you know, what I try to put out is just real life situational content, okay, where you can kind of learn. And obviously I'm, I'm, I'm an elder in the fitness space, okay? And I'm one of the few that's still at this age putting out content. But I want everyone to realize that there is uh, a certain term where you can be the best in the world. And then there's the after term where you can still continue to do great things, give back, be, be uh, someone out there that's still promoting, but at the same time, enjoy the process, right? So time, time is the most important thing for me uh, spending time with friends, family, um, obviously my dogs, Angie, um, as part of my whole outlook now, um, enjoying the trips that I'm taking, but I'm booked more than ever in 2024. And it's because of 
you know, obviously uh, the support I get from all around the world. So I want to thank everyone out there that continues to follow the channel. I want you to stay focused on your goals. And, you know, if you're thinking about, uh, you know, chasing a career or you have some questions or, you know, you just want to comment, you know, make sure you guys like, uh, comment, subscribe, um, but leave something, you know, interact on here and tell me how you're feeling about, you know, something about your life or even what I've done that's may, maybe given you a positive experience uh, in the fitness space or beyond. Uh, I'd love to hear it. I want to thank you guys so much for following the channel and uh, big shout out to everyone out there. Keep chasing it and uh, don't give up. No mercy for you. No worries for you. That Game of Thrones. Go sexy on you. I flipped the script. I rolled the dice. Don't fall asleep because I'm working nights. Hey, you trying to show.